Or well, The Bachelor. Oh, that too. Are we starting? Am yeah. I like going? Oh, we're we were already yeah, we're going. Rolling. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, Orange County brings a lot of famous people. Whoa. Yeah, The Bachelor, like one, I think one of the most recent Bachelors, he was in middle school with me. Whoa. And Rebecca Black came, was at my middle school too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's amazing. Everyone's it, doing so well. Oh, it was now. Has anybody been like massively, massively famous from your high school? Me. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. I mean, I would say Rebecca Black was like massively famous at the time for sure, and Wait. still is. I love her. You went to school with Rebecca. She was Black? at my middle school. Yeah, yeah. Well, during Friday, when like Friday came out, but I'm two years older. But she was in school with my brother, and so that's. Do you I, remember I her in this. class, like I, seeing her in the school? I so she we never overlapped at school because my middle school is only two years. So she was like seventh grade, I was ninth grade, and um, I remember being in ninth grade Spanish, and I turned around to talk to the guy behind me, and he was like, "You have to see." this video because his little brother was in it because all the kids from school were in it. Yeah, that was like my second yeah, question. Were these like hired Wait, actors or were these friends? This... Oh, I'm in literally my life. Literally, oh my God, Which is like so sorry. same realm of yes. like massively viral. Iconic. You're silly in the, pops. the, uh, the G -Wagon. G -Wagon, yes. Back of the G yes. Wagon. Oh my God. She, yeah, I turned around. He was like, look at this. And then I watched it. And I was like, oh, that's fun. And then all of a sudden, just overnight, just obviously blew up. And then I had never actually met her till like maybe a year ago. And we were at a, a bar and she was like, Remy. And I was like, Rebecca. And I, we we're like, El Rancho forever. It's great. She's actually, she's awesome. She's so, she's nice. so and talented, talented too. I agree. She has like, she does like Charlie XCX, like hyper pop. Agreed. She's remixes to Friday. Mm -hmm. like, give me all of that. And she's just having fun and doing a great job. Like she's a performer. Have I agree. you ever put out a song? No, as, like, God, no. You, no. I, but I think I've talked about it that I was in God's image. Uh, yes. <laughs> the one, it was like you were in like a band with like 10, 12 other people and you would just oh, do no, the splits. Oh, no, there were like a hundred of us. A hundred. It was a traveling Korean performing Christian group <laughs> only spoke korean i mean only sang in korean i don't speak korean I don't did know you what sing I in doing. korean yes do you remember no. the lyrics <laughs> absolutely not i don't know what i was saying was it k-pop-esque no they were christian songs okay but i wish i wish i was a k-pop girl i'm trying to like brush up on my uh my my k-pop this and my uh, korean reading or uh, learning korean because i'm going to korea so glad to hear you never got back to me with that. Text. I know I did it. <laughs> I did it. I'm you sorry. You ghosting our guests, Matt? Yeah. But this was like months ago, <laughs> no, two months kidding. ago, and I was like in like this mood where I'm like, who who do I know that's been to Korea? And I texted you that, and then <laughs> I what did, never, what did you, you say that he yes, left you on like, road? He said, "Oh well, all I got is a Have you been to Korea?" I said, "Yes." Never heard from him again. <laughs> Other than when you asked me for a K-Town recommendation. I'm just the go-to Korean yes, girl. Yes, and I love the K-Town recommendations <gasps> Where'd you as go? Well. Um, I went to none of the places you said. Okay, but I did fine. go to the Korean shopping center. Well, there's two. There's like two malls. Okay. There's like the Korean, the K-Town Plaza uh -huh. and the K-Town like shopping center. Okay. I went to the plaza, I think. Ooh. The one that's like a mall straight out of the 90s. And they have the H-Mart inside, inside the mall. That oh, that's my and favorite H-Mart. And the food court too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you eat? What did I eat at the food court? I had oh, I had one of those little spiral potato chip Love. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think Patricia and I we had some dumplings, which is like I don't know if that's like full Korean, but it's more like it is. Yeah, it is. Well, there there are like different variations within every culture, I would say for sure. Oh, we had now it's all coming back to me. We had a certain <laughs> type of dumpling, but it wasn't like kale. It was like chive. Was the, chive. Mm, chive dumplings. That's what good. Yeah, that's what we had. And then I was texting you about the kimchi. <gasps> yeah, did you get it? No, I didn't because then it was. <laughs> It was St. Patrick's Day. Boy, he's just wasting my time. It was Saint I made him. No, Mike, you need to see. I made him the most beautiful list with so many recommendations. Like bullet points. I'm sorry about Maybe him. I really am. I'm so well. glad you still decided to show up today. It's okay. I honestly, I have a, I have some news to tell you as well. Where is it? I have to show you. This list is good. Have you gone out and came? Like well, phone you put numbers, that together just for Matt. Yes. <gasps> yeah. High dessert. She linked I literally, it. I, I said like, well, they're best for this, best known for that. The thing so is, I'm going to still no, have Wait, did he value. respond to that list? He did. He okay. said he did. Okay. No. I was like, this that's is like, a, this that's is like an assignment at a company. Agreed. That's like if you work for a travel agency and you have a client who says, hey, I'm going here. What can you do? I would pay for that. MLA format. That was yeah. a resume. <laughs> cited. Fully <source>. cited. <laughs> all of it. Yep. And I, I know I'm, I have it like fully like bookmarked now in my notes. I'm going to treasure it every time I do go to K-Town. But um, <laughs> what was your, you said you had an announcement? Yeah. What is the announcement? Yes. Um, so I've started wedding planning, just like dabbled in it. And so I have a planner. And so he was asking me like, you know, and I, I hope he doesn't listen to this because I'm embarrassed now. He was like, 
we're, we gave him a span of three months to choose between or like, you know, I'm good with any of this time during the season. And he came for to me. For the date of your wedding or yes. just, okay. Yeah, yeah, for the day of the wedding. And so he was like, he picked a random date, was like, this is the one that I'm shopping around to see because I told him any time in three months. And then I was like, amazing. We like scheduled our whole date to go look at venues. And then I was sitting in my room and I was like, oh. <gasps> It's the one date that Matt King said he can't come. Because <gasps> you came up to me. Was it for my brother's yeah. wedding? And you said. May of next year? Yeah. You were like, hey. <gasps> no. Just letting you know. No, it's okay. I moved oh. my wedding for you. Wait. No, you <laughs> did. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. And I called my planner. I was like, hi, I'm so sorry. I have to move the date. And he didn't ask why. But I was I was nervous if he did. <laughs> I'd have to say that you. <laughs> I moved is... it for you. Wow. But I literally moved my wedding around for you. Wait. I don't know, though, if my brother's getting. Are, wait. Are you planning it for it to be a Saturday? Um, or a Friday? Mm, probably a Saturday. Okay. We haven't gotten that far into it. Your Just brother's date's dead. confirmed, right? Yeah, but I think now that I'm really thinking about it, my brother's might be a Friday. Oh, well, that's okay. So it could kind of work, though, it's if fine. you still She already wanted... moved it. I already moved it. <laughs> he already called all the venues. We You're a real friend. Bed. No, I need that you there. That is incredible. So you can't miss it now. I'm so no, sorry. <laughs> especially with this and M MLA formatted K-Town <laughs> recommendations. How's it been the whole wedding process though? Is Cal, has Cal been pretty easy going with it? Do you, do, does he have a lot of input or is it like you need to give him two choices and he picks one? He really is like whatever she wants. Okay. He's super chill about everything. I feel like he's gonna be very particular though about certain things like music. I think he's gonna be really particular about he at first, and I keep bringing this up and he gets mad at me. When we first got engaged, he was like, what if I wear a red suit? <laughs> and he likes to die on that hill, so I'm not sure. Red suit a for red the suit? day of, yeah. like, on the altar saying, yep. I do. Yeah. In the do you red think suit. that might be like a negotiation tactic where he just wants to wear something a little bit non-traditional, but he'll start with a red suit and then come down to, like, maybe a blue flower suit or something? Or do you think he's dead I'd set on red? I'd be impressed if he did. I don't think so. He's Are we very talking, like, red jacket thinking. or, like, no, red he head he wanted to toe. red head to toe. Say he, you'll remember me, like <laughs> standing in a red suit, saying, baby, I do, babe. <laughs> Can you believe that? So I think I'm going to have, like, right now we're looking at just the venues and picking the date. And then, so he's very open to that. I think once it comes down to the nitty gritty, he might be a little bit more picky. Okay. But we'll see. That's an incredible gesture to move a wedding date for somebody. Big time. I mean, Remy, this that's is... the only thing that I, you're the only person that brought anything to my attention. Now so I'm going to move that around you. I got to get you a good wedding gift because <gasps> you got the best one. And we finally used it for the first time. Patricia <gasps> did for Easter Sunday. Oh my God. What'd she make? Well, you got, for the people who don't know, you got us a KitchenAid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or what do you call it? Fan mixer? Dutch oven. Oh, Alicia Dutch got oven. you the KitchenAid. Oh, dang it. It's okay. We're a <laughs> but we did shield. use the we're Dutch oven shield. as well. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. So we use those, actually we use the Dutch oven way more than oh, we do the KitchenAid. Good. I feel, that's why I picked that I really did because I use mine every day whereas my kitchen it I use once every three months right you need like a good occasion to really bust sure. it out I'm, till, I'm too it. shy to like touch it yet the kitchen aid the kitchen aid. oh yeah it's a whole the, thing the Dutch oven the la crusette la crusette it's gorgeous Yay. do you how many of those do you own too many too many do those are like gifts people get me because I cook so much like my mom yeah. every time will just get me like three variations and people collect them too and they have like hundreds of them. Oh yeah, I'll see like, like these like blowout sales that they'll have in like New York and people are just like duking it yep. out trying to get their hands yeah, on them. Yeah, it's crazy. And okay, so wait, so still wedding wise, so thank you for adjusting the date. You're so Cal's welcome. wanting to wear the red suit. Yep. Are you wanting to do anything that you think is out of the norm that you're excited about doing or like nervous if you want to go through with it? Not I'm the wedding itself. I'm going to invite <laughs> Lana to sing me down the aisle. <gasps> Shoot your shot. I'm gonna ask. I don't think she will, but I'm gonna Via ask. Be a DM, Via handwritten DM. letter. I mean, we're we're buds now at this point, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot my shot and ask her if maybe. Well, actually, no, I'm not gonna ask her to sing me down the aisle. I'm gonna ask her to attend, and then maybe if she would like to sing, she may. I'll what's have the, the mic ready. What's the format of that note? Are we doing like all lowercase? Is this a paragraph? How deep do you get, or do you mm. keep it real casual? Like, hey, do you want to come? I'm, I mean, I already accounted for her and some guests to come if they would like to come. And I think I'll just be like, hi, if you would like to come and you're free on this date, please feel free to roll by. Hell yeah. Do you and guys we'll talk currently? Um, I congratulated her on her nominations for the Grammys. Amazing. And that's the last time we spoke. because so that was a while ago. Okay. I just don't want to bother her. Do you go through yeah. like your her. recent posts to see if she liked them? Just to, uh, you know like, what? Is I she don't. interacting with the, I the content? Don't. I do get some screenshots sometimes when she likes Ollie's stuff. So she's, she's around. She's okay. there. Oh, Ollie's monitoring that all the time. Ollie yeah. is constantly just in the little heart where you could just see from there, like verified tab only, only, only. Yeah. Yeah. He would be like, 
I need to see the seating chart before like Absolutely. it becomes official. Absolutely. Making sure that I am seated at the table. Adjacent, or either... like not too close, but like nearby for Do sure. Do you think you have enough like relatives and friends who'd be able to keep their cool around other maybe special guests? Probably not. No. Oh, actually, we, it'll be like a meet and greet. <laughs> actually, no. I, uh, regarding if Lana were to actually come to my wedding, which she's not, <laughs> like if Lana were to show up, uh, I think everyone would be fine. I think it would just probably be Ollie. Right. <laughs> He's going to get so <laughs> mad at me for saying all this. I'm so sorry. Are you doing bridesmaids? Group I like or... one all the traditional stuff. Okay. I love it. I loved your wedding. I love I just like like having the whole bridal party crew. I think that's so fun. Bachelorette, like I'm so excited. Do you think you're going to go pretty big on like the amount of bridesmaids you have? Because I didn't realize how many we had until I just went to a wedding and they brought all their groomsmen out and it was like 14, same <gasps> size as us. I'm like, that's like a sports team. It was. Like, it, was it was too many. <laughs> it's massive. We I like that yours were in windows <laughs> yeah. because you had so many. <laughs> yeah, they made sure that we were all in line and everyone could see out uh, to. You had fourteen. Yeah, it was yeah, it was fourteen. I think. Wow. I think it was sixteen. Was it six? No it was, way. it was an insane number. There, it it was, was. We were when we were like packed in before we all walked out. We even there was like four groups of four people each like having a conversation. It was so many people. It's it was tough, great though. It was fun. It was and I loved every single one of yeah. them. It's a tough time though when you kind of have to sit and make that list. It feels like a MySpace like top eight. Oh You're for like, sure. Because there's. People who are like your best friends from every single chapter of your life. You have your childhood friends, yep. your new friends, your family. Mm -hmm. And you want to be like, who are the ones who you know that you will be friends with further on, like later That's in life? true. Because sometimes like people are still not friends with like their bridesmaids or their groomsmen. Oh, yeah. Decades down later, the road. There's like so many stories where they the last time they spoke was on the wedding day. Yeah. Because just so much shit happens around a wedding. Yeah. Do you have drama around your wedding? Mm, no drama. Good. You know what? No. Okay. No drama. I think I was sometimes a little disappointed with like friends who wouldn't like show fully up on time just because mm. I wanted to like enjoy the day of the of wedding course. and have some quality time. I um, feel like it was pretty smooth sailing. The, uh, the only time I was really stressed on my wedding day was because of Patricia and I's first dance song. We, you got to shorten them down. You guys made them, I've never thought that, but you guys made them so perfectly short and sweet. Yeah. And just like, I like that you knocked them all out one after the other Not two. Not the full three and a half minutes. I you loved need, it. You yeah. need a, like a chorus and a verse. and Because time yeah, is money yeah. when you're at a wedding. You're spending that money. You yes. got to maximize the, the fun times True. for your guests, especially. I'm budgeting. I don't, I've never even like brought this up to Patricia yet, but I'm budgeting for your band because that was the fucking Eras tour. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That was three <laughs> hours of nonstop performances. Motion, oh, what was their name? Main Attraction. That was the name I of them. I think about them all the time. Yeah, that's- I will be flying them. They're pretty, I know. And once you get that band, yeah, I, you become a bit of a snob going to other weddings because you're like, it. not as good as the main attraction. That was in, that was a concert. Yeah. I felt like I was like, we had Kelsey on the podcast and she was like trying to get them to wave. Like it was like a <laughs> real, yeah, like, like it was what? a real concert. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. And it was like the day of the wedding and we were about to get picked up by our bus. And then our wedding planner reached out and said, do you have the edited version of the song down to a minute? And I was like, no. <gasps> so I had to like download GarageBand on my iPad, which is usually like the first thing you delete if you're just trying to save yeah, uh, memory on your, yeah, on your yeah, iPad. Yeah, yeah, and I'm having to like trim it down, you know, export like a YouTube file and to like listen to YouTube. And I made it work. And what was, was the fun. song again? Um, Don't Worry Baby by the Beach That's Boys. That's right. We love that one. So Do you sweet. and Cal have like a song? Um, Not. Not not one for them, like one that we have like throughout our couple history, but we don't have one for the wedding yet. But he really loves Mac Miller and I love Ariana Grande. So we're like maybe like a song Ooh. where they were, there's one, I think it's called that, that part, this part where they both sing on it. So we're like, maybe. And you would want, uh, just for that track to play, you wouldn't want the band to sing it, right? I don't know. Because that's another thing too, is when you get a band. <laughs> yeah. If it's not part of their catalog that they're used to performing, you then have to like pay extra for them to learn it. And sometimes I've been at some weddings where like they'll just be on their phone like reading the lyrics <gasps> kind of for the first time. Oh no. And yeah, you don't want that like messing up the vibe. Yeah, I think I would have just like the DJ play it or something. Yeah. Can I say, speaking of Matt's wedding, my experience arriving to Alabama was a little bit hectic. Um, <gasps> I was supposed to have a flight from LA to Miami then Miami to Alabama. And I was flying solo and it's, yeah, it's cause there's no direct flights from LA to Alabama, fine. So I get on my flight to Miami and then as I'm sitting, I see Caucasian James coming down the aisle and I was so excited cause I had a friend 
travel with me. I was like, James, oh my God, you're on my yeah. flight. This is so exciting. So we had a great time on the flight. We land in Miami and they, when we landed, we sat on the runway for 40 minutes <sighs> and our layover was one hour. So we got off the plane and sprinted down the entire Miami airport. Him and I, we were wearing cowboy boots because it was Alabama. So we packed, <laughs> Obviously. we packed like our boots and our wedding <laughs> shoes and me and him were like, we have to try. We had maybe eight minutes to spare. We bolted, ran to the gate, got to the gate, and they were like, sorry, you just missed it by three minutes. <gasps> oh. So we missed our connecting flight by three minutes. And I was like, it's okay. We'll figure this out. It's going to be fine. And so we go to the counter. We wait like, you know, 20 minutes, talk to the woman. And she says, there's another flight that you could try standby tonight at 11 p.m. And meanwhile, it's like 2 p.m. So it's standby, which means you're not even guaranteed a seat. Or you can fly tomorrow. And James was like, spend the night in Miami. And I was like, let's think about this because there was the dinner we wanted to go to. Yeah. And like, we've already committed, flown five hours. I kind of want to just get to Alabama. Is there another city we can fly to sooner with a guaranteed flight that maybe we can drive to Alabama? And the woman was like, great idea. Well, you can fly <laughs> to Atlanta. Idea. So I, great. I did a quick Uber search to see like how much would it cost to go Uber from Atlanta to Alabama? It's like a two and a half hour drive, hour drive, whatever it is. And it was like 150 bucks cheaper and we'd get there the same night cheaper than spending the night in miami yeah so true. we did that so we, james and i went to the lounge hung out now we're spending like all day together <laughs> thank god <laughs> which is like great no it was so it was so much fun i'm so happy i had a buddy and then we we got to our flight to atlanta flew to atlanta got in the car did a two and a half hour drive. James, Jesus. thankfully, he talked to the Uber driver the entire time about like the NBA. Oh, an Uber. Yeah, it was an Uber. For, we didn't rent a car because renting a car would have been like so much. More it would expensive. have been more expensive, yep. and I would we would have had to drive. That's a road trip. It was, and and we didn't. So we basically didn't land until like. You a, want snacks? It, we're gonna. We like, got. Yeah. We got. We got yeah. to the hotel like 11 30, 12 30 at night. We were supposed to get there. I was supposed to be there at five for the rehearsal dinner, or whatever <gasps> it was. Oh no. And so I get to the hotel, and like James was staying in a different place. So now I'm in the hotel, and I'm just like so exhausted it was such a long day and i was kind of like a little bit not in the best mood just because i was super hungry like i didn't get a chance to eat yeah and it was this whole long day and i'm in the hotel room and the first person i see is remy she walks in her and alicia are just like coming in from some event that you guys we had went to the after party at that bar with the dance floor the yes, karaoke yeah which i wasn't allowed to go to because i was getting married like the next day yeah oh, so we we had we're like, you can't go out you like <gasps> and we, we gotta stay can i tell you the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders just seeing you and alicia like it felt like oh my god i'm i'm i got out of jail like i'm seeing pe i'm seeing family in like this new foreign land and you guys had food uh -huh. and i was like oh this is thursday yeah thursday yeah. night oh yes okay yeah and like you guys were just it literally i still think about it how much of just like a sun it felt like sunshine entering the room Aww. and you gave me this like so much food that you guys had because you had shot a video or something you had yes. all this extra food yep. and it was just like it literally set the tone for the whole week. And I was Aww. like, I'm going to have the best time ever now. Aww. Remy and Alicia are the nicest people in the world. Like, it's so nice to have real genuine friends. In a, and it felt like a foreign land. I was like in another country almost. And it was just, I cannot say enough good things. I want to state for the record publicly, you changed my weekend. And oh, it was really nice. You. He just wants to be invited to your wedding. I mean, oh, no. obviously you are. <laughs> that's, that's, that is not the purpose of saying that. I just <laughs> want to go on record. Like a lot of people ask, you know, these guests that you interview or like people that you're friends with, these influencers, like, are they really nice? Are they just putting on an act? And like, I want to categorically say oh. you are definitely one of the nicest people I know. Thank you inside so and much. Out. That yeah. is so nice. And then that leads me to my second question. I just saw a TikTok that you posted okay. about this mailman like stand. <gasps> the delivery cart, yeah. Have you seen this? Oh, yes. Yeah. I saw that you upgraded it. You I bought did. A, I bought a mini fridge. A it is fridge. one of the greatest ideas I've ever oh, seen. Can you just kind of like talk me through how you came up with this and Give me the history. Uh, well, I can't take any credit. A okay. lot of people on TikTok do this. Okay. And I wanted to do it for so long because I get so much PR of like snacks or oh, drinking yeah. things. And they're just like stacking up. And obviously all these drivers are outside in the hot sun all day long. And so I made this cute little cart because I had like an extra cart in my house. Uh, but then I got a lot of comments after saying that leaving like plastic bottles outside in the sun is bad. It could like warp the drink or, you know, like it could release any sort of yeah. watch my deals. So I um, took my money from my TikTok fund and bought a mini fridge. <laughs> <There we laughs> wow. Just put it right back in. And I bought a mini fridge and then I just put all the snacks outside and 
all the delivery drivers have been so sweet. Like, and I it just gets used. Like they they actually the take the okay. Oh, yeah. Do you have a so camera far, on them? Like do, just to see if they say like thank you. Or... I do. Well, I have like the doorbell, the ring doorbell as is. So I like I'll go back and watch, and they're just like so nice and so grateful, and it's so sweet. And um, so far, they're loving the um, what are those green granola bars that are really crunchy that get everywhere? Nature Valley. Oh, yes. Nature Valley. Yes. Yes. Those, bars, are, yeah. those are the hit so far. <laughs> that and the Gatorade. So I'm gonna restock. Very nice. It's really sweet. That's it's awesome. Nice. It was but, just seeing that was just like such a that is such a Remy thing Aww. to do. Like I felt so genuine and authentic and it ties into the way that you are as a person. So thank you. Yes. It's very cool to see that. I, it like inspired me to do something similar. I don't have the exact same home setup, but <laughs> with you? like summer approaching, I think it's such a brilliant idea For to sure. just, there hasn't been any greedy grabbers though, where you're like, uh, I, I put so, this out as a treat and I then they're like they brought an empty box like, and just fine. stuff it in I will say someone was like you should put like bags outside for them and I was like well then people might take too much and then I'll have to like yeah, they it'll want be their a whole flavor. thing they want the choice but I'm like take as many like take four take five but yeah. like if you clear out the whole thing then obviously that you can't leave you have to leave stuff for people to find <laughs> yeah. you know yeah yeah oh that's so sweet thank that you that is it's really it's cool to see like a DIY project that's community driven and just like a good idea that actually I like you see all these DIY things that like I'm never going to do that I'm not going to take a blow dryer and like bend a piece of wood to like put <laughs> right. so it, it just I, I don't need this, this is, it doesn't I like it's cool to see but like I, it doesn't apply to me this is something that I was like wow that's actually entertaining to watch and something that I can actually Aww. do in my life and like be very just uh, make a positive change in the Those world so nice very there's nice there's this woman named Nabella who you guys have probably seen her content she's like the queen of doing all this kind of stuff. And during winter, she lives in, I think on the East Coast, so it's colder. She'll put out like a Keurig machine and like, like Ooh. every day. Yeah, like, a little like, hot coffee. Yes, hot coffee, Ugh. hot cocoa. So I'm like, I'll get there in the winter, but she's like the blueprint. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. The mini fridge is just brilliant. I'm like, well, I'm now I'm, I'm just, I was worried I'd poison them with these plastic things. I didn't know. Do you keep it going all night or do you like unplug it? No, like, I keep it going. Yeah. I, I haven't checked the electricity bill, but I'm sure it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah, it'll Energy be efficient. Fine. It's all good yeah. for a good cause. <laughs> I almost was, uh, I almost was going to have a little uh, date with Cal tonight. He reached out to me. <laughs> I heard. Yeah. We were going to go see Monkey Man or he, wait, I think we were going to go see it on Thursday, but I already have tickets for it tonight. He told me, he read me your text also. I he was just like, Matt King's a funny texter. I was like, don't I know it? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I know he invited you to, or to see Dune or something. Yeah, I know. He, uh, well, he's seen it how many times? Like four times? Six. He saw it six, for the sixth time last night. He's watched that movie for 18 hours. He just put out a review too that I was like, yo, this is an essay. Like, <laughs> this is like an MLA format. I heard you you're a fan it? of the reviews. Huh? Have you seen it? I did. How many times? Just once. Okay. What'd you think? I loved it. Better than the first one, first, too? So much better than the yeah. first. I well, I Cal is like a Dune fanatic. And uh even with the first one, I think he saw it quite a few times. And so he kept asking me to watch the first one in theaters, and I was like, uh, I'm good. Not enough Zendaya. And then finally, when I wanted to see the second one, because he was raving about it, and he only will watch it in IMAX, and he'll only do X, Y, and Z. Um, he was like, let's go see it. I was like, okay, fine, I'll watch. But then I had to watch the first one, obviously. It was good. It just like at two, the two hour mark, I was like, this is, this is getting it's a little a long. heavy exposition. Yes, yeah. 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 It's, but I get it. It's, it's setting up the story. Two blew my mind. Cal and I went on a date night. Alicia did tag along, but she couldn't get the seat next to us. So she sat like five seats in front of uh -huh. us, like on a different row. And like through the movie, we'd just be like looking at each other. It was great. I loved yeah. it. Not enough to see six times, but like maybe I'll see no, it again. Six times I can't do that. Mm -mm. Like, oh, I, especially if you want my butt to go to the theater mm -hmm. to go see it. I'm not going six times. I agree. Yeah. It's a lot of money on popcorn and soda. But AMC Stubbs, right? Right. Does that work? Oh, yeah. I guess you can reapply it. I think it, but that's like... probably why he's doing it. But yeah, I mean, it's a lot. That's a, that's 18 hours of his life, plus previews, 24 hours. Has he read the books? Yes. Okay. He actually, <laughs> he's going to get mad at me. He was telling me the reason why he read the books was because this director, like it came out that this director was doing the movies. And I guess yes. he like loves this director. Oh, yeah. And so he had gone to Cannes Film Festival in, in college and that, that director was there for some other movie. And he was like so excited to, to maybe ask him for a photo. So we like practiced his French to ask him in French because he was like, you know, if I ask him in French, maybe he'll like say yes and so he like went up to the guy or like at the barricades like at a fucking meet and greet just like whatever his name is like Denis, flagging him down Denis. it looks like dennis but yes yeah. yes he's like flagging him down he asks him um i forgot he says it in french un photo something something and he's like no and kept <laughs> oh, oh no so cute, it's so cute but Man. so sad so 
why I don't like that director anymore. Uh, yes. Actually, Dune Snub sucked. and Cal in what, 2008? I like, know. Before you even did anything? Before. Have you ever asked a celeb for a pick and they said no? Or do you even go up to them and ask for a pick? I feel like or... I've never really seen celebrities, I don't think. Like, at, at outside of like a, an event. Like an event, yeah. I wouldn't do it. I'd like, I don't see anybody out in the wild. I'm right. not lucky enough. I don't think I would. And but even if you were a big fan of them, you wouldn't be like like if you saw twice, you wouldn't be like, can we get a picture? No, no. I get too nervous. Yeah, I just don't want to bother people. I know. I wish I was more bold about doing it because sometimes people get away with it. It's like no problem. For sure. Have you seen the guy that goes up to everyone and sings for them? Yes. I love him. Like I wish I I could never. How does he go around and find those people? I think I, just, I have a theory. Mm. I think that some of those are set up. Oh, you think I think so? that it's a good look for the for the team and their PR team is like this will look good if we collab with this guy and they're doing collabs. I agree cuz sometimes like it's in the lobby of the record label. Like yes. that's that's a setup. Yes. Yeah, that's, which although it could he just be a psychopath and like going stay. to the record label every day waiting for someone to be there. That's true. And Ready, but I think it's like kind of a could be a cool look for a celebrity to be like, oh, look how normal they are when yeah. a crazy right. fan comes. And up if they're to them. nice about it back, yes. sometimes when they're like, no, everyone's like, ew, mm -hmm. or you like the glam bot, you know, when people are like not very polite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I eat that up, and like if they're not polite, I don't like them as much anymore because I'm like, yeah. be nice to him. You can really see it in their eyes, like for how sure. neurotic they, they are. They don't even say just... thank you. Mm -hmm. They'll just walk away and he'll be like, thank you. They're like. And keep going. It's true. Have you ever done a glam bot? I did. And which the, I was the in, one? Yeah, yeah, the one. With Cole, what's his name? Yes. Yeah, wow. I did. At, um, I forget what event, but it was so bad. Did you know that night that you were going to be getting a glam bot? I don't think so. And I think I like, it, I remember I just blinked really hard and it's so slow-mo. It's like my eyes were closed for like half of it. And then one time I was in the back of Charlie D'Amelio's. That's my claim to fame. Oh. That's my claim to ready. fame. Yeah, it was me in the background. Yes, that was me. Yeah, they say like the more subtle you do it, the better it turns out. I, I think that. some people make it too dramatic. I they saw think a compilation gonna... of like the worst ones, <laughs> and they're they're pretty bad. Who the has Sigourney the Sigourney Weaver one? Oh, yeah, there's some <laughs> bad ones. Well, because it, it it seems like the way the speed and the angle that it comes in on doesn't look like it's what you would expect. No, like I feel like I would fuck it up. Yeah, the people like nail it. I'm. It's more hats off. That's incredible. It's a millisecond. It's yeah. just like whoosh, yeah. And it's it's, done. it's like this. It'll be like ready, three, two, and that's it. Yeah. It's like oh, that. Yeah, and because like, you you can't see it come no, by. It no. has to be. I would be know. like, where's it starting? Where is it ending? Exactly. And where should I be looking? Like, yeah. give me full stage direction. I need blocking. I need yeah. timing. Like, but so true. Then you'll see someone just like so Ye someone nailed it recently. Yep. Maybe it was Madison Beer or someone like yes, absolutely fucking did. nailed yeah. it. I was just like, she not practiced me. for that. Yeah. Actually, she probably didn't. She's just perfect. Yeah. Um, do you ever see celebrities just like driving around or like you, you, I, you never had a celebrity LA just like, oh my God, there's, I don't know, Adam Sandler at the air one. Oh my God. I saw Patrick Dempsey at the airport once. He was so kind. Patrick Dempsey? Yeah. He was really cute. <laughs> McDreamy? Yes. He was like complimenting these kids or they, like these parents were in front of us with their little toddlers and the toddlers were going crazy. And he was like, you know, if you're nice, your mom might give you a lollipop. But I didn't know it was him. <laughs> I know. <it. laughs> and, and I think like right after he got named Sexiest Man Alive like this year yeah. or something like that. He's been, made, he's been named, I think, like the most out of anybody. It's like him and George Clooney, I feel like. He's never gotten it before. What? That's why he got it this year because he deserved it but then everyone was like 10 years too late 20 yeah. years too late yes he was very kind to those children <laughs> get a lollipop. a lollipop false promises heard from today's sponsor rocket money are you somebody who has found that you've had subscriptions that you may have forgot about or you've paid twice and you never realized it trust me i have especially now that i'm married it's really great finally getting all your finances in order with your significant other but man it does not feel good when you realize that both of you guys have been paying for the same subscription it's great knowing when you can eliminate it and that is when rocket money has been a lifesaver when it comes to that did you know that nearly 75% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about? I know I'm someone who's had for subscriptions that I've forgotten about, but 75% of people have had that experience. And before I started using Rocket Money, I thought I had about four or five subscriptions, but I couldn't believe when it showed me that I was actually paying for like nine or 10, and I actually had two of the same accounts twice, which is just so frustrating. Thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones that I forgot about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, you have full control over all of your subscriptions and you get a clear view of your expenses. You can see all of your subscriptions in one place and if there's something that you don't want, Rocket 
Money can help you cancel with just a few taps. I love how the Rocket Money dashboard shows me all of my month's spending this month compared to last month. You're spending more, you're spending less, which is always good. And I can basically clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they'll help you create a custom budget to keep spending on track. We will even try to negotiate lower your bills for you up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in unwanted subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash hoot. That is rocketmoney.com slash hoot, rocketmoney.com slash hoot. And now back to the episode. You like those Alan eyes? Or Alani? I didn't get the cherry twist ones. Am I pronouncing it wrong? No, yeah, wait. wait. I thought that was a joke. How's it no. pronounced? How Alani? Oh, Alani. Alan I. I love Alan I. I'm going to start calling Is it that. for sure Alani? Alani, yeah. Oh, okay. They're Sorry. Amazing. This is like a Berenstein Bears, like Mandela effect, because I really thought they were Alani's as well. Alani. I think Alani. It's definitely Alani. Alani. Alani knew. Was yeah. it Hawaiian? They kind of came out of nowhere. Actually, and I'm going to be that person, I've been like on them since like 2016. 17, 2018. They've been around that long? Yeah. And oh. they're they're amazing. So I was on, because they started as like more of a fitness, they are like a fitness company. Mm -hmm. but the, They do power bars, all of that. Yeah, yeah, protein powders. They started, I think I started with their pre-workout. And then these obviously blown up so much more recently. They're like so retail now. Um, but I've been a part of their like group of like core people for so long. And they give the best Christmas gifts ever really ever you guys they'll just ship you like a like every christmas holiday actually not in the past couple of years i might be dropped from the list but <laughs> when i was in it when i was in the thick of it they would give me like a giant like 300 dollar duffel bag and then stuff it with like airpods and like what? theraguns and like workout sets and all this Whoa. stuff it was amazing we love you Alani. no we, we love, love them so much. they're amazing their products are great and i'm so happy they're doing so well and their campaigns are crazy and i love all their flavors too Everything. this is even an ad they don't folks miss. we're just saying we just I'm, love it i love cosmic stardust that oh, flavor really? yes that one and I'm hawaiian not ice i think it's called yes. hawaiian shaved ice maybe i can't have coconut because it tastes like bacardi Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I have the two and then I'm like throwing up. Yeah. But I like their, the tropical is like one of those popsicles that were red and yellow, like the pineapple cherry. Oh yeah. So good. Yeah. Recommend that one. That's my fave. I love that. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> and your nails are matching the uh, can too. I don't know if that was they intentional are. for today. <laughs> no, I'm just here to promote Alani new today. Al and I. Did you get the poppy robe that they sent out? It is one of my favorite pieces of clothing I've ever gotten. <laughs> Patricia never I lets me see. wear the poppy robe. I need, why? Because it's her robe now. Oh, you oh. share it? It's a communal robe. <laughs> I, well, because like I always have my robe in my bathroom, but like I use her shower and I always want to go for it. She's like, that's my robe. It so. is such a good robe. It's beautiful. Ugh. I mean, they come up with great merch. Cal yes. will wear it too. He's like a full full bone influencer at this point. <laughs> he really is. He's so good at it. How's your beef with Zach Justice? <gasps> I don't know. I haven't seen him yet. Can you yet? give like the full context and the skinny? Because like I was trying to piece it together Absolutely. through just TikTok clips. Yes. And I just want to know what's going on. For sure. Um, how much do I want to say? I I didn't know the extent of what had happened, um, but I did see that clip where he said that he was going to slip. Did you see this? He he uh, he said he was going to slip my family's throats because oh, so Lauren had. Were been, you like, in the room with him at this no, time? No, I wasn't there. He's on I wild didn't even know. Nine? Yeah, yeah, Is he this... was on wild till nine, oh. and um, he had asked. He he had brought up. Lauren had asked me like months prior. Hey, do you want to do the swap with Zach Jester? Or he like, can I give you an intro? And I said honestly. Uh, we're not like doing guests right now. So just give him my manager's email and they can like talk about it, and yeah. it later. Um, that was like a long time ago last year. And then in a recent podcast, one of the questions was like, who's someone that you turned down in your podcast? And I was like, oh, Zach Justice. Like it's, it's not a big deal. But uh, the only reason I brought it up was because he went on Lauren and Jeremy's podcast and was like, Listen here, Ratatouille, which I think is funny. Like, yeah. that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's great. He's just kept calling me Ratatouille, Ratatouille. And then that's all I had known. And then the clip came up and it was like, um, what are you going to like, what are you going to do if if like, why are how do you feel about her turning you down or whatever? And he was like, I'm going to go to her family's house and slit their throats and wear their blood and all these things. And I was like, oh, 
that's crazy yeah that's, he, and i've never met him before you've never met him never met him oh that's a little never, insane n- yeah you're, it was you're a little, bound it was to a meet much. him pretty soon i mean you I guys know. are running with some close uh, proximity and do quarters. i be nice do i be <laughs> or you film it confront him you strap like a whole body cam <laughs> on <laughs> like <laughs> gopro on my head <laughs> this is like here. helmet on like, <laughs> like in one of those like full like doggy suits <laughs> that they like train with canines <laughs> it's like what you got, you got something to say Let's hear you say it again yeah <laughs> Or you just like invite him to like a cooking thing and you guys have like... We could be nice about yeah. it. Well, I you understand could, you could he was joking. Him too. Yeah, I mean, the knives are in proximity. You're like, yes. you got something to say? Like, so, right, say it again. Yeah. That's a little bold of him to was, never have met you and say that. It was bold, that. yeah. I wasn't... Um, no DMs from him or anything trying to like cl- uh, clear it up? No, Sorry for I mean, I would appreciate it for sure, but I don't know the guy. So I'm like, I'm not holding that against him. But it definitely was just jarring to watch. I was like, Wow. I don't know this man. Mm. And I know he was joking. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it is no, like, his, his, it's there's his a threshold. Style. Exactly. Things. There's like a threshold. I understand if we were like, if we knew each other, but to not know me and then do that, I was like, damn. That's a little much. <laughs> this is going to be a crazy introduction when I first meet him. Yeah. But I'm trying to decide. I'm like, am I nice? Alicia actually said she saw him recently. And she w- she said he seemed a little like, is she going to be mad at me? Oh, so you weren't there on Easter. No, I wasn't. I know. I was looking for your name on like one of the bags and I was like, well, if Zach's there and Remy's there. I know. Oh. That wouldn't have. I'm like, <laughs> sure part of me a... kind of wants to just post a photo like this. But then also part of me is like, maybe I should not be nice. Right. I don't know. I'm deciding. Yeah, this Knowing is new territory. Knowing me, I'll be nice. Yeah, you gonna... pr- I can't imagine you're going to be like, listen, motherfucker. No. Like, I that's... wish. <laughs> I wish. I know so badly. Like deep down, I wish I could. I just know I'll be nice. One time... I saw one of my friend's exes and I wasn't supposed to be, I wasn't supposed to be nice. I was just supposed to like not, you know, really interact. Yeah. And I like came up and I was like, love the hair. I was like, why did I say that? I don't love your hair. <laughs> and that haunts me every day. I don't know why but I did that. But you even gave him a compliment? Reflex. Yeah. That I even like, why did I do that? This is a friend's ex. Yeah. And I mm. shouldn't have said anything. Do you, and yeah, I, and, do you think and, that's like the code of anything is you just shouldn't even talk to a friend's ex? What if you actually did? If, no. I could be cordial. Did he break her heart? Um, or his uh, heart? Or I don't know who this is. I wouldn't say. It was like a mutual thing, I would say. But I just definitely shouldn't. I shouldn't have complimented. I should have just said, hey, nice to see you. And then right. not even nice to see you. Hey, walk away. <laughs> I'm going to practice what I'm going to do. To yeah, we have to practice. Maybe being we can mean. practice right now. Okay. Would this be good? This would be a great clip. Okay. I'm Zach? Yes. Oh, well, I have to think how like Zach would respond. Or <laughs> he's already... Probably coming up with every type of response <laughs> as well. That kid prepares his jokes. Does he? I think so. Don't you get a vibe? I do. I think I, when he's doing those like dating shows, some of those one-liners that he gets. Okay. I think those are probably Rehearsed. pre-written. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm just nervous even talking to you, pretending to be him. I know. I'm trying to just like channel myself into being like Zach Justice. Oh, hey. Hey, Remy. Fuck you. <laughs> Listen. Talk oh. about my fucking family again. I'm going to fuck come and slit your throat. Are we sure he was talking about you in this clip? No, I'm positive. Yeah, absolutely. Also, uh, again, also, I know it was a joke. It just got yeah. taken too far, but like, I know it was a joke. It's I'll just, be nice. No. <laughs> what if he calls you Ratatouille in person? I love that. I think oh, that's okay. so funny. Okay. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Okay. I was like, that? Clever. Yeah, he's one of those people that it's like, his persona is so, he leans into it so much that, but when you're, when you do talk to him in person, one-on-one, I feel like he's not fully that persona I but over that. time i kind of think maybe his brain is just like even when he's in his private life he's just still being that guy and you know took it too far and i see we'll and then, we'll have to rein it in it for sure yeah I i'd like to see it see I'd us like to meeting see, I, yeah i, I would Zach, I want, come on wrestling? out <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine Actually, just that like would have been jerry hilarious. springer style have the yeah, they full pull confrontation in a chair right here. go down <laughs> no we would never do that um how was uh <laughs> Your experience with Matt's other co-hosts going? Oh, it's going great. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Pretty yes. unfiltered. Pretty X unfiltered. Yes, yes. Are you guys still sticking with that name? Um, not sure. TBD. Oh, really? Yes, TBD. I can't get into that too much, but... Oh, I thought there was like a survey going around, at, like for people's input. I'm not, honestly. There's a lot that goes on that I'm... I'm like very, everyone handles a lot. Everyone kind of does their own thing, which mm-hmm. is really nice. Like I'll handle this, I'll handle that. So I'm not quite sure where we're going with the name. I'll tell you off after the cameras. Are I think it's actually a really great podcast because I love seeing like Zane and Alicia on this like singles journey. And Isn't you guys fun? having, you know, your perspective, Heath's perspective on getting them to talk about that stuff and get it out there. Because I feel like Zane, Heath and 
my dynamic when we talk about Zane gets pretty shy about it. Yeah. I think having like two like steady females perspectives yeah. in the room with him to allow him to come out of his shell. For sure. A lot of goodness is going to come from it. I've seen a lot of those comments that are like, Zane never opens up that much. And that's what he like, he told me before. And he's like, I really want to talk about dating stuff more. But it's hard when like no one's asking those questions. But as a girly girl, I'm just like, elaborate more. Like, I want to know more about that. So I feel like and he needs to be kind of challenged, that. too. Like Agreed. when you guys were saying uh, 15, 20 minutes for a date. No, 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 no. <laughs> like I can't even get into that one. No wonder he's single. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? He's only given 15, 20 minutes at a time. That would be no. I mean, I don't think he's actively doing that. He was just thinking if it (laughs) was that bad, he would commit to just like 15, 20 minutes for a date. Yeah. But Um, like the studio looks great. Things are going well. Thank you. It's been really fun. I feel like it reinvigorated my love for just podcasting in general, just to like have new conversations because Alicia and I've done pretty basic for six years. Yeah. Which is so fun. And I'm going after this to go record. But at some point, it's like, We've had so many of the same conversations and it's it, it always takes like a little bit of a different turn, but like having just something fresh is really fun. Yeah, and just yeah. a shift in like momentum and getting yourself out of like your typical headspace of who you're talking For with. Sure. That's why I love having good influences and yeah. then unfiltered. Cause then you'll have ideas where you're like, ooh, this is not something I just want to talk about with Remy. Yeah. This is a whole idea where I want to talk about it with the boys. Agreed. Agreed. Are you guys gonna do guests? Um we haven't talked about that, yeah, you guys but that'd be a lot of first. people too. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's just a lot of screaming into the microphones. Or if just someone's, you know, missing, you bring true another guest on. You We've guys done have that had for... guests right on Good Influences. Yeah, okay. we have had. We had so... one guest. Only one? Yeah, we had. We we... Had? Yeah, it was oh, just it was Claudia. Just... Oh. No, it was... no, we had Ben Con on for money. No, he wasn't a guest though. We've had oh. like when someone wasn't available, we've had a replacement. That's fun. Yeah. I like that. Oh yeah. When I had COVID, we had Connor Wood. Replace oh, me. Okay. He was gone for one, and then we had so we had oh we had Lord DIY. Oh, and fun. And Ben Con to replace one Matt. And then we also around. have a Brooke Averick one that is still in the vault that we've never released. But <gasps> the reason why we've never released it is because I think I wasn't on that episode. But the topic of conversation yeah, is you were. so dated. I wasn't on the Brooke one. I was on. It was Connor. just Carly, Aaron, and Brooke, and it was you. And no, Brooke. I was in. I wasn't <laughs> here. That's why they did it with Brooke. Did, you did I the Brooke on? one. <laughs> I have no memory. It was like of that. a Q and A. You were like answering fan questions. I was out of the country and you did it with Brooke and, and Carly maybe, and Aaron. Maybe that is true. And I feel bad because Brooke sometimes like, or is, yeah, Brooke has been like, is that episode oh, really? Yeah, why out? is it and not out? I mean, it's from like 2022 It's so dated. Point. We're probably talking about oh. yeah, whatever was, was happening. The queen was still alive. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, Rest in peace. Have you ever yeah. been recording and then something catastrophic in the world has happened? Or like in a the major, midst of it? Like, like a major world event, yeah. We were recording Good Influences when the Queen died. And no. we prepped it in the beginning saying the Queen is in not good condition and we might <gasps> find out during this episode if the Queen passes away. Oh and we found God. out mid-episode and we have that now recorded so we know we were when the Queen died. Honestly, I don't think so. Nothing that exciting. It's good to, if something is going on, to prep it just in case it does yes. happen For before sure. we click record. But we've had no earthquakes, right? No, no, I don't think so. I filmed before. I've been vlogging when there was an earthquake, but like a small earthquake. Nothing yeah. crazy. I've always thought like, what if a big one happens right now? What if a big well, one Having happens? lived, gr- grown up in California, mm-hmm. have you had like really severe earthquakes ever happen to you? A pretty big ones. I think I think there was one in 2008 because I was in middle school where I think it was like a five magnitude, maybe like a little higher. And I got home and I remember being in the like quad area because we weren't in our classrooms. We were like in the it, like outdoor lunch nutrition area where um, everything just started fucking shaking and everyone was screaming and like the whole like it was just like cement, like the whole yeah. thing was shaking. I got home. All the shit was knocked off all my walls, all my like decor oh. trophies all those things were all on the floor in the moment of an earthquake though are you an instinctual survivalist where you're going to go run under the doorway yeah. or under Absolutely i not. kind of freeze up too i'm like oh yeah this is gonna pass this yeah, is gonna it's pass gonna, it's gonna you... be done soon i'll just sit there and i'm just waiting but i'm going to die if the big one happens like for real yeah. i remember when i lived in downtown i lived on the 28th floor of a high rise and oh, a no. really a, not a big big one but definitely like four mid four magnitude happened and those buildings are built on rollers which i know is like safer they but are. it felt all i did was run up and down my hallway what was happening because i felt so like i was just scared and again uh-huh. i don't don't act well in any sort of stressful situation and you can feel the building 
Ooh. It's so like it's weird. Twenty eighth floor. Also, you're just trapped. Like, For sure. You're that's it. It's done. Either you're gonna live or you're not. There's yep. nothing you can do about it's it. It's the worst when it happens like at midnight like right when you're about to go to sleep and yeah, you have something yeah. important that you have to wake up for uh-huh. yeah but then an earthquake happens and your adrenaline just peaks and you're yeah. up until four in the morning now because you have just been so woke oh, up wow. to reality I'm like, oh oh <laughs> can't <laughs> you, think anything of it because there's no earthquakes in where you guys are from right no texas, no New there Jersey? are like fracking tremors in texas sometimes where people have reported earthquakes and it's because of oil <gasps> drills i kind of like an earthquake it's kind of fun I'm like, ooh, let me ride this wave a little no, bit. No, you're not. I'm serious. Because I, I know it's not going to, like, there's, unless it's the big one. Yeah. Which I think we'll know when that happens. It's going to be so obvious. But if oh, it's just like a regular, good. like, things are moving, I kind of like, I'm <laughs> like, ooh, yeah, yeah. And it's kind I kind of like, oh, like, I really want to experience it and feel it and, like, look around and kind of, it's just such a unique phenomenon that I'm not used to. So I'm just, I get very excited when there's an earthquake. I'm just like, is this one? Yeah. I bet when you were like moving to California too, it's like, I'm going to feel an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. I, I was excited to like experience a new weather phenomenon. Like For we sure. don't, like th- one thing I miss is thunder. We don't get any thunder thorn- yeah, storms no out here. Yeah, no big claps of thunder. There I was feel one like. recently, like in the past few weeks. Yeah. But like growing up in the East Coast and yeah. in the South, you, when it's raining, it's like gagoom, boom, <gasps> lightning, and like the whole sky lights up, and it's kind of like comforting, and you go to sleep, and oh, uh, it's thunderstorming. But we don't have that here anymore, so it's kind of like uh, I'll trade the thunderstorms for the earthquakes. <gasps> when mm-hmm. I hear thunder, I think lightning, and then that, then I think I'm going to be the one person that that gets struck and I'm going to die. <laughs> like I, that's getting my, electrocuted. My way of thinking, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Getting electrocuted. That's like you know. Oh yeah. And there's I'm like done for. predictors if your if your hair starts doing that like static electricity. Yes. Uh, yes. Or if like you're on your arm, your hair starts to like raise up, and you're if you're in an open field. And it's raining. You don't. You're you're fucked. Have you ever seen like lightning scars of like after someone's been struck by lightning yes. and how it just like goes down? It looks kind of sick. It does look pretty that dope. It's crazy. Yeah. Speaking of oil fracking, did you see the thing on TikTok where people were pranking their yes. significant others or people yes. about going on a brand trip? Uh-huh. <laughs> I did call. I I did it to Cal, and Cal was like, "That's weird," and that was all I got. So then he did it to my dad, and my dad and I are exactly the same. We're very like happy go lucky, just like happy to be here but i was like that's amazing you should go what a great experience i mean that one guy died that one time but like other than that super safe you should absolutely do it how did you fra- well it's great you have a supportive father yeah. like I, there was one where a guy called his dad and a lot of people were tagging me saying this dad is matt that's king what you would do yeah well i loved how supportive he was that he's the son was interested into it Aww. and i think his name was gabriel um but just kind of talking them out of it uh-huh. but that whole yeah the whole uh oil rig prank though the best avenue people did with the prank is saying that they were going to do underwater welding because that oh. really got people's like brains in it got more into their parents brains of them being like i'm sorry you're going underwater yeah. and welding something <laughs> not just like think thinking you are going the rig, to yeah. the to the rig itself yeah. underwater welding that's where like it Extra pushes layer. it even further i mean my dad would have been like you love water that's amazing <laughs> like truly that's what my dad would have done i want to go on an oil rig though for sure if somebody told me we're going on an oil rig today i'd go i wouldn't do the the drilling right just but a I'd, field trip yeah go on the rig see what's check up check it out really i yeah i would huh maybe spend the night too wow Yo, (laughs) all hands. I'm good with that. No. Yeah, I'm good too. Would you ever go to outer space? Absolutely not. No. I'm so fine right now. What about like slightly in orbit? You know how they have those like virgin planes that they're shooting like really high up into the sky and you can be in orbit. You don't want to look out the window and see the earth? I am so good right here. Really? I don't like like roller coasters, so I can't even imagine a rocket ship. Oh, Like acceleration is not not my forte. You don't like a roller coaster, Remy. Mm -mm. I don't like moving. I like being very stationary. (laughs) I'm being so honest. I don't like... Any sort of spinning, dropping, anything. Do you like going to an amusement park like a Disney World or Universal? Love the food. And I'll Uh, I'll hold everyone's bags on the rides. Mm -hmm. Not even like a gentle like... 3D glasses. We're just going to move around in a... I'll do it. I just don't want to. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm no fun. You know they say roller coasters are good for kidney stones. Oh, just get them moving? It shakes it out of you. Yeah. (gasps) It it can like... The the amount of passage that it can like get 
accomplish yeah. when you're on a roller coaster is very significant. It's like taking your body and to yeah. whipping it so compared to the amount of pain that you would go through just trying to pass it normally. That makes they sense. They say roller coasters are really good. Hmm. To uh, I'm with you on uh, the roller coasters. That's a little much, mm-hmm. especially at like my advanced age it's like <laughs> I, like when you're 16 you can go and eat nothing and just like 10 a.m you're riding a roller coaster and you're like let's do it again now it's just like i get like kind of seasick on a roller coaster and i'm just this wasn't that fun no, I feel yeah. the same way i've never been a fan but as i'm getting older i hate them more i also have like very strange anxiety with trying a new ride because I don't like not knowing what to expect. Mm. So I will watch YouTube videos of the ride <laughs> so to, you know see, where it's yes, going. to know what to expect. Yeah. And like, where are the drops? How big Cal's is the drop? moving you like in a box. Literally, the like, VR set spraying on. Spraying water on you, <laughs> just trying to get it going. It's like, I just, it's not my journey. Yeah, yeah I'm that's not a fair. Fan. Yeah. That's fair. What about haunted houses? Or... Hate it. Oh yeah. my God, no. One time when I was in like, I think I must have been like in middle school, uh, a lot of, like houses in my hometown a lot of the people like worked at Knott's Berry Farm or Disneyland because we're in Anaheim and so the guy that did all of the lighting for Knott's Scary Farm lived in my neighborhood so he would set up his own haunted house like on his driveway and like m- Fun. it was really cool but I had gotten a tetanus shot that morning so my arm was all numb you know <laughs> someone pushed me really hard and I knocked down the haunted house <gasps> trauma <laughs> trauma 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have, I no, have I, no nothing there no. well just thinking about like you with your arm and the tetanus shot like you could have played one of the zombies too just like <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, get, yeah maybe get in on the fun but mm, i went to travesty like, what the uh freak fest i think it is the one at magic mountain a oh few yeah years fright ago. fest horrible oh that one's terrifying just all of them are bad i don't like waiting in lines for a haunted house too because mm. you're like i'm i'm having to wait to be scared is like a little conflicting for I me. Just, like the people that are that like that wait all year to be the like scary people. Oh, like can you watch auditions me? where yeah, like they have like people it. come in and they're like, <laughs> they're like again? Sorry, wasn't really <laughs> believing that one. Can you can try you give that me a again? little bit more uh, fright? Yeah, I'm sensing a lot of fear. I need a little bit more fright. Yeah, and you're just like, like American okay. Idol. <laughs> Do they actually have audition tapes for this? Yes, there's a multiple that you can watch. Online. Imagine not getting it. Yeah, <laughs> and that just, it just lives like, out there. Yeah, like you didn't get the universal. Like you're yeah. scary enough. <laughs> like they, I guess they must have a surplus of people. But yeah, jeez. Not my I thing. used to work at Spirit Halloween. No, I did. Way. I had a little gig working at Spirit Halloween. Which would location? Help, um, the one in Louisville, right outside of Vista Ridge Mall. Here, beautiful. No, in Texas. Oh, oh, in Texas. I was like fifteen. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it was pretty great though. Like you would help a fish, you know, uh, costumes for people out in the back. The smell is always very distinct. That like so rubber, yeah. plastic, fresh. plastic, yep. and like rubber and yep. Ugh. Mm-hmm. I imagine it would be quite headache inducing to work there for. I believe that, and it's just a short stint then, right? Probably like for the month of October, and yeah. that's it. It's hard to say goodbye to all those employees. I'm you know, sure. it just comes. You bond by the end of it. Do you have a yearbook that you pass around and sign? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. It's like a. <laughs> it's like Halloween. a yearbook, but it's like from Hocus Pocus. It's like bookie. <laughs> Like a coven book. What was funny. your first job? Like your first first one? YouTube. YouTube. Straight mm-hmm. out the gate. Mm-hmm. Your first time collecting money was from YouTube. Technically, I like babysat when I was younger, but other than like a like a real real job was YouTube because mm-hmm. it kind of took off for me in my first year of college. So then wow. I out. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you never had the like target interview when you're 16 and like welcome aboard Mm -mm. i wanted to work at the movie theater but my parents wouldn't let me (laughs) but other than that yeah i wanted to work at the movie theater too it looked like so much fun and my best friend worked there and they were just like always partying on the weekends and there was all this like you know all the who's hooking up with who behind the scenes And i was like i want to do that but like also my best friend was like this is my thing (laughs) truly (laughs) i got in trouble at the movie theater with one of my friends who worked at the movie theater because Step Brothers was playing and that's a rated r movie but he was like no we can still go because I work there (laughs) they won't question us and I'm like sure let's go and we bought tickets for you know a PG-13 movie but then we walked into Step Brothers and we're sitting there movies like (laughs) starting and then we look over to the left and the ma- his manager's just staring at no. him. But just taunted us with a stare for like 15 minutes. <laughs> During the previews? Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. The first like 15 minutes of the movie. So like, ha, 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 ha. And then he comes up. He's like, Addison? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, you can't be in here, man. Is this your friend? You guys got to go. Unbelievable. 
couldn't see the movie. Oh, but yeah, I got, it's got not a trouble. government organization that you're in the wrong room, like spying on something. It's it's. What were you 16, 15? Yeah. That is so funny. That's. Though. But rated R is is it 17? Yeah, 17. Uh, plus. Unless you're accompanied, you have to be accompanied by an adult, right? Yes, that's, that's right. Yeah, and then you can go see it. But what's such a weird age at 17 is it for a rated R movie? But then when you're 18, you can buy a pack of smokes. Yeah. But then you have to wait till 21. Yeah, like, it's, it's not exactly organized the most e efficiently in this country. But right. Nothing yeah. really is. What was your first rated R movie you ever saw? Oh, what a fabulous question. I don't remember. I remember my first PG-13, though, was He's Just Not That Into You. Ooh. For my 13th birthday, I took all my friends. He's Just Not That Into You. Yeah. Wait, that's kind of like... A classic. That, yeah, that came out like in 2000s. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you went and saw PG-13 in theaters. You yes. didn't see any PG-13 at home. No. Okay. We, um, my, my fun birthday idea for my 13th birthday was we saw that and then went to Chuck E. Cheese. <gasps> my former employee. <laughs> you, were, you worked at Chuck E. Cheese Yes. As well? I, it was Chuck E. He was the rat. I think you've told me this, but I don't know how I forgot. How yeah. do you feel that they took them all away? Are you okay? Oh, the animatronic band? Yes. Uh, devastated. But yeah. there actually is only one location that still has the animatronic band, and it's in Riverside. And Shut my brother up. and I went to go see it, <gasps> and we got interviewed by the LA Times. Uh, for just going? This is so funny. And last night, I went to like bed with my Chuck E. Cheese like uh, uh, hoodie that I have. You're just a fan. I yeah, am. he literally went Geeked to go see the, like, the last one that exists of it's the animatronic still there? band. Yeah. Okay. It's still there. And, and like, would you, was this prearranged? Are they um, happen to be there? It's just there was a lot of hype around it because Friday night, Freddy's or what is it? The movie, yeah, Five yeah. Yes, yeah. Freddy's. That's like an animatronic band. So there was a lot of like people uh, talking about online where are their animatronic bands. And that one was the only one that's left. So you should go and see it. It's really cool. I should. Alicia and I have been meaning to go to Riverside because that's where she grew up and that's where I went to college and that's like the origin of our friendship. But we've never made it yet. So Wait, we'll make is it Riverside? stop there. Is Riverside near Van Nuys or no? Um, I don't think so. Oh, you know what? It's not Riverside. It's Ooh. Northridge. Oh, that's a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah, it's right. Oh, especially it's closer to yes, where you're at. I'll be there. Go check it out. I, will, I love a Chuck E. Cheese. I love an arcade. Yeah. So oh, much. Oh, you love an arcade. I love an arcade. Okay. I like round one. I like a Dave and Buster's. I just like a place where I can spend money and waste it on gaming. Do you like to earn tickets or are you just more in for the fun? Mm, I like tickets because I like those coin pushers where I'll just be there for hours. Just trying to yes. have you play the Angry Birds one. You guys, what's the coin pusher? It's where you put the coin in, and you know how it drops down, and then it's there's like a little like pusher like this that's oh, pushing. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. There's always yes. them on TikTok where you see them win the big prize, and the quarters are stacked up. That's for the, yeah, the Angry Birds one. Can I'll you win that? The tower? Yeah, like how do you actually win? You just have to knock the tower down. So the Angry Birds one, there's like three sections in the front of like waste or keep, and so you're just constantly trying to push the. Well, you put your coin in, it comes down, and it's building up this tower. And if you knock the tower down, you get all those points. But does it ever knock down? Because I feel like the way that the pusher, it's always just, it's like just an inch away from actually doing it. It does if you put enough money in. And you stay there for yep, a while and for commit. For hours. And sometimes they'll have little, uh, like in casinos, they'll have like uh, some cash in there too. <gasps> like rolled up. I love Is it a good investment? Yes. Are you winning more than you're putting in? Oh, Probably. I mean, I get to go home with like an airhead and like a, a, a <laughs> shitty cup. But okay. yes, I like would a say that's fun. Spider. Have yeah. you been to the? Uh, it's called maybe Player One or Barcade or one of those like Round One. Is it Round One or where barcade. it's like a bar and an arcade? One up. Yes. There's a. I feel like there's a bunch of they them. They mostly and they all are. Like yeah, they're like all that. like bars now. Yeah, where which you, I get, love. you get like a beer and then the games that they have are incredible. I've been to one in. Uh, there's one in Burbank where it's like. <laughs> They have the original Mortal Kombat, Simpsons, Hit and Run, uh, every single arcade. And they, I don't know if they're making them new or they're just like so well preserved. They look brand new and the games are like, Pristine. it's unbelievable. Well, yeah, because yeah. they like basically have figured out how to put all the games onto one machine now too. That like they have, they have like but these are like the original cards. ones. Like yeah. it's, it oh, looks okay. like it's from the 60s, 70s, whenever they came out. I love going to an arcade. I it is, love it. And it's only like a quarter to play a game. So you really can go in with like 10 bucks and spend an hour. It's a pretty good exchange of time versus like going to a bar and it's $10 for a drink. You finish that in five minutes and now it's right. on to the next. The way I would run through 10 bucks in about 30 seconds. I'm just like, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. oh, when I gamble, max bet, max bet, max bet, max bet. Because oh. I convince myself I'm going to win the jackpot. Do you, do you gamble a lot still? You like going to still? a casino? 
Yes, I love it. I feel like you're very casino coded. Alicia and I love a casino. You do blackjack? Is that your go-to game? Blackjack or, you... or roulette or okay. slots. I do love it all. Have you played Baccarat? No, what's that? Baccarat, I have heard about it a lot and I finally played it for the first time. It's similar to blackjack, but it's almost like a 50-50 split. <gasps> and you're playing, you can either bet on the dealer or you can bet your hand and it needs to equal seven, I think. Oh. And you're trying to get the closest one to seven. <gasps> And you can do that virtually, and if you just play the player or the banker every time, it usually goes up. It's a good way to like baccarat. Baccarat. Okay. I'm going play, to Vegas. I think it's yeah. crafts where you roll the dice. I and... get to do that one too, just because okay. I don't want to like waste other people's time that are there knowing what they're doing. I don't. I hate doing that oh, in crafts, Vegas. I think I would just throw that, and it would miss the whole table. <laughs> like that's too much. Too much responsibility. Too many eyeballs. It's too on mechanical. Me. You don't yeah. want to mess it up. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that way. So, what do you like to play when you gamble? Uh, Alicia and I are blackjack girls, and Cal and I are roulette girls. So roulette. I have my like who I go with, and then that's our game. Are you good at blackjack? Alicia and I are decent, and okay. we're getting better, and we'll find a really nice dealer where we're like, well, what would the book say? And then they'll tell us what to do. Yeah, oh. we they'll tell you. Yeah. If you play. play by the book, die by the book. Yeah. That's yeah. usually yeah. the best way to do it. I go with the gut, though. Mm -hmm. Intuition. Mm -hmm. Doing all that math in my head, I, I can't do it. I always have a calculator out. I'm just... Like, sir, get off your phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say. Uh, it, I'm like there with my fingers. Yeah. And like they're like, they're swiping the cards. I'm like, okay. <laughs> they just do it so fast. I know. I, it's, but they're not adding. I've asked them. They just memorize like the number combinations. Yeah, they see the patterns like already in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. they're not adding like seven plus nine. No. They're just no seven and nine. You can do. 16. Okay. Yep. Huh. Can we I'm talk, practicing. Can we talk Korean food for a second? Oh my God, I would love to. Yes. So as you know, we're going to Korea. The oh, I'm, she knows, Matt. Well, wait, when are you going? Because Alicia and I are going We're going on the 9th, on Tuesday. Oh, so soon. Yes. <gasps> We're skipping Coachella and going to Korea. You're not going to Coachella? Yeah. No, I'm not going to Coachella. Like no one's I just kind of really looked going. at how uh, how much it was going to be, and you kind of run the numbers. You're like, that's a trip abroad. And I've done Coachella like eight times. Yeah. This would be my ninth time. Wow. I think. Okay. I'm pretty sure. But I want just new memories because all the photos kind of become the same and so I just real. want to shift in uh, pace in just Korea. I loved Tokyo and I'm just trying to experience all of Asia as I can. And I love what I've witnessed. I love Korean culture. Ah. But the food, now for food, I have had Korean barbecue many times. Okay. I love kimchi. Mm -hmm. um, but there's all of these different types of dishes. For sure. I don't know what I should gravitate towards. Okay. As a white American man. I The only time I've been to Korea was um, like 15 years ago, which you would have known had you continued our conversation. Yes. I also feel like I'll I got that vibe because I <laughs> did start looking on YouTube like Seoul Remy and I was like, yeah. there's not been much content yeah. of her out there. I wasn't vlogging at that time either, but Alicia and I are going to go like in a month or so. So anything that you like, let us know because okay. we'll hit that up too. Oh, I can get you recommendations from my mom. My mom goes pretty often actually. Please do. I'll make you a list or she'll make you a list. We're saying just, in um, Make sure to respond to the I text. will. Yes. I'm sorry. I think I just, yeah. I'm I just kidding. I, it's so fine. Um, I would say, I mean, I, from what I've heard is Korean barbecue, like the meat is not as popular there because meat is so expensive. Right. So you'll find more like street food or noodles, like that'll be really popular. What's their like kind of sushi roll looking uh, one called? Kimbap? Kim yep. Kimbap. Yep, 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 yep. I just you'll finished love reading that. Crying in H Mart, uh, oh Michelle God. Zahner's book, The <gasps> Japanese Breakfast Singer. Yes. Oh, I loved it. But there was it, uh, so much of the book was around all these dishes and I'm like oh, trying to Google them amazing. on the side. I'm like, well, what is it? What does it look like? What's in Kimbap? It kind of is all different. There's so many different variations. But did you see like the Trader Joe's one went like super viral? People are going crazy no. for that one. I'm going to, I'll bring you some. So you get like beef Kimbap or like. Yeah, uh, there's beef, there's fish cake, there's vegetable. There's like so many different variations. And it's still wrapped in seaweed. Yeah, and it's like seaweed with rice, lots of different like pickled veggies and then meat potentially. And then they like almost brush it with like sesame oil. So it's like soft and kind of wet but that sounds like weird to say wet but it's no, really, I'm vibing it's really with it. good all the street food i think you'll love you have to go to like all the street markets for okay. sure and, and then dakboki were, what is it dakboki okay. was that in crying in a yes i can't read it because i just know it's gonna wreck me like mm -hmm. i just i can't read it i didn't realize it was a memoir till halfway through and i'm really? like this is a really sad book oh <laughs> it says memoir this is Japanese breakfast. Yeah. Like it, it changed my whole perception of the I've book. I've heard it's but incredible yeah, though. It's really beautiful. Dakboki is one of my favorite foods. It's like um spicy rice cakes. They're kind of spicy. They're kind of sweet. Rice You'll find cakes. that a lot. That's okay. really good. And then what were these like cold noodles that you were having with Alicia one time yes. in one of your vlogs? That's called naengmyeon. So it's like a radish broth with like a 
almost like a soba noodle, I guess, like a new, like a chewy buckwheat kind of noodle. And then it's really good if it's hot there, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty humid and hot. So yeah. you'll want to try that. It's really good. And you got to cut up the noodles like with the scissors? Yeah, because they're so long. If you like, and they're chewy, you can't almost like, br like if you bite down, they don't break. So you could essentially choke. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you got to try the octopus. That's really big too. The live octopus. Have you seen those? I have seen it and I was a little skeptical about it. The thing is I'm adventurous enough to do it, but mm -hmm. like if Patricia's like there seeing live octopus move around and there's nobody who's like culturally encouraging her to eat it. Uh -huh. If you were there, she would eat it. Ah. But like me taking too, her to do it, she'd be like, what is well, this? Well, people die because if you don't chew it enough, the suction will stick to your throat and you'll asphyxiate. So you have to chew it really well. There's like a whole thing around it. Oh boy. Yeah. And it's like live. It's moving around. Yeah. I don't think it. it's alive. I think they just, they just cut it. So it's all like the muscles moving still. And, oh yeah. The nerves mm -hmm. are still kind of tingling mm -hmm. without it. Would you try that, Mike? Oh wait, you can't have it. Can are you, you a have vegetarian? Octopus? Kosher. Kosher. That's what? right. So I like when I live about my life, I just say I'm vegetarian. It's easier than explaining what kosher is. So Understood. I vegetarian. remember that. What about octopi? Can you have that? No. Fish, uh, seafood is only kosher if it's like a swimming fish that has fins and scales. That's the only. But yeah. not creepy crawling. Basically, if it lives underwater, it has to have fins and scales and then it's kosher. So like a goldfish, salmon, goldfish. tuna. <laughs> Who's eating a goldfish? I'm just betafish. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. I don't know if a betta fish has scales. Yes, it does. I believe it does. I think it's just the fins. Betta fish have the most beautiful looking scales. You ever see it's like red and Maybe blue they are and kosher. all of that? Yeah. I wouldn't eat, a, but Understood. like I remember yes. asking my dad, like, is goldfish kosher? And he's like, yeah, you can just take it out, whack it with a spoon and eat it. But I would never do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds a little <laughs> violent, but um, like tuna, uh, salmon, all those what are- What about an eel? Or no. a snake. Those have Does kind it have of fins sca and scales. It sheds. It has scales. Fins. Well, but okay. It's now I'm be talking about fish. out of the sea. What, can you eat a snake though? No. How come? Animals that are out of the uh, bodies water, of water. Yeah, like like land animals. It's uh, it's two weird qualifications. It's has a split hoof, oh. and it's called choose its cud. Have you ever heard of this phrase? No. Uh, yeah, chew, like uh, a cow chooses choose cud. Yeah, like, oh. it's like a it's like a some form of how their digestive tract works. Like a cow has like three stomachs or something, and like they chew the food once, then they spit it back up, and then they chew it, and then they swallow it again. It's some weird qualification, but it'll be like cows, goats. Um, I don't know what, what other about anything with a beak. Uh, birds. Uh, there's just a list of kosher birds. I need like a kosher guy. It's a whole, it's a, yeah, this is why I did just say, yeah, I'm vegetarian. I was going to say, because <laughs> yeah. I remember in the hotel lobby when we were oh, giving you our yes. food, you're like, I can't have meat. It's also, you can't mix meat and dairy, correct, in the same meal? That is correct, okay. yes. Yeah, Actually, there's so many rules about oh, kosher. How sometimes in kosher homes that there's two different sinks as well? Yes, two sinks, two dishwashers, two sets of utensils, Whoa. because you can't mix meat and dairy. Ah. So like really religious Jews will have a separate set of all utensils that are labeled, like this is dairy. Anything that's dairy touches it, and then anything that's meat, you separate. Is that a big wow. flex to have, like, in your home, too? Yeah, I mean, yeah, most people don't it's have expensive. two. It's, yeah. Do your parents have two? Uh, we used to. When I was growing up, when we had all four kids in the house, my dad, the house that we built was, yes, two sinks, two dishwashers, two sets of everything. Two dishwashers is crazy. Yeah. That's, that's like, the craziest thing I've ever heard yeah, in a kitchen. Yeah, two dishwashers, yeah. Wow. wow. Some people have two microwaves. Um, wow. Now my parents I want to just, check like Zillow listings and like yeah that's the way that you you'll see know them in like the Jewish neighborhoods in LA oh, for sure. of like people who have the two yeah. things two dishwashers yeah set for sure. I did see a TikTok recently of someone just saying like they moved into a house with two dishwashers and it they just didn't use cabinets like they use the dishwashers as their cabinets oh. because you just have one that's clean and one that's dirty and you just keep oh, moving wait, it keep that's swapping kind of smart. and then when you're done with one now you have your new cabinet and it, and they just like saved all this cabinet space i was like they definitely moved into an, a jewish house that's so interesting yeah in asian culture we don't really use dishwashers i would say or at least in my family and like I know quite a few people. We just use them as a drying rack. Like you hand wash and you just use the dishwasher as a drying rack. Drying rack? Yeah, you just let them air dry. Do you do that? I did in my last apartment because my dishwasher didn't work. And like that was pretty common growing up. My parents wouldn't really use the dishwasher too often. Yeah. But now I'm running it all the time. And what a luxury that thing mm. is. A dishwasher is the single greatest upgrade that you could have in your life. Have you ever cleaned a dishwasher filter? Yeah, I know you think it's gross. Should but I be doing that? Yes. I saw someone on like TikTok, once a year. Remy. Go, it's at the bottom, and you open it up, and it's all that food that's gone down there. And it's the food I that was, didn't make it past the filter. Oh, and that's it's a cow job. Ooh. Oh, I, I was mortified, and every single time I keep thinking about it. it? And, well, I've asked Patricia. I'm like, have you ever cleaned the filter? She's like, no. 
And I'm like, just put on some rubber gloves and just do it. Put a mask, take it I'm out. I'm just scared what I'm gonna find. Have you seen also like with homeowning? That's something I have to, I have to think about and have not thought about. Or also washers and dryers, like that tube. There's a tube that goes from your dryer outside, and yes. you have to go and like snake it. And if you don't, it could start a fire. Oh right, because haven't done that. More of the dryer yes. that's going outside yes. of that. I didn't know. Yeah. Any, no one tells you any of this stuff. No, it's really. I, I always love the smell of dryer lint coming out, coming out the side of a house. Kind of reminds you as a kid, you're out in the backyard and you're just hanging out near those vents. Just that dry skin <laughs> yeah. flake smell, uh -huh. hair. Or when people do like the bathtub soak of their clothes and they mix it with the broom and then it's like just a pile of black gunk Ew, in there. Yeah. I mean, like you gotta really, it's like borax and, and there's like, this is what's really what's in your clothes. Yep. It's, I'd I don't, like to I don't wanna that. know. I'm happy yep. with my I'm so good. laundry Close pod, yep. dryer, I'm good. <laughs> How's your new home coming along? Um, Fine. It's it's okay. It's definitely have I told you guys all the problems that I've had with this house? No. Oh my god. So I moved into this house in March of 2020, right like as the stay at home order, the two week initial yeah. one kicked in. I was like, amazing. I'll move in here. I'll unpack all my stuff. I'll have two weeks to do it all. Obviously, two weeks turned into a lot more time. And when I had moved in, we had just gotten like a spell of rain, which we don't get now. We're getting a ton, but at the time didn't get very much. And th when I walked into the garage, cause I was trying to move up, like my office into the garage, water had flooded from the ceiling everywhere. And oh. I have a balcony over the garage. All to say the uh, contractor came and fixed it. A year later, I wake up. In and quotes for the audio exactly, listener. Yeah, fixed it. <laughs> And, and I quote, and then a year later I wake up and I hear Cal freaking out. I go downstairs, our whole house, like the whole ceiling had basically like capsized <gasps> and water had flooded underneath the garage, oh. flooded over the garage. We had three balconies. It flooded from every balcony. So I go through this whole thing trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, this is now 2021. I ended up hiring, which thank God, my best friend who is now getting married to a faulty construction lawyer, <laughs> which how specific is that? Keep in mind, she had just started dating this guy and she was with me for the whole weekend and I'm freaking out about my house. And then I get to meet him for the first time. She says nothing. I get to meet him for the first time. He's like, wow, you should really sue. I was like, I would love to sue. I just don't know what to do. And he's like, she didn't tell you I'm a faulty construction lawyer the, over the whole weekend. Ooh, wow. Didn't mention, hired him on. He's amazing. I had to sue the guy that built my house because it was built so poorly. I had to basically sue to get everything refixed. They had to come demolish all of the balconies completely. And then while demolishing, they found out that they didn't build the balconies at a slope because they need to build the slope so that the water can drain out. Yes. They built them in a V shape. So all the water was sitting in the Pulls middle. To the middle and, didn't yeah. build any oh. drainage. They found the drains in between the cement and the drywall. <laughs> like in, underneath the cement was the drains, uh, but like fully closed off. And so I've been dealing with like all of that Did you have to confront years. him or like have any interactions no, with this guy post? I, just the lawyers okay. did. I didn't have to do anything. And his company's God. fixing it or a different company is? Um, I never would use him again. I had to hire a whole company <laughs> to do it. Have you had to go into like physical court? No, we ended up oh. having to settle because I, my lawyer at the time, my lawyer was like, uh, it's better to settle for cases like these because even though you're completely in the right, if you get to court and even if the whole jury uh, blows a whistle and they're like, fully in favor of you the guy can and a lot of people do this the guy can just claim bankruptcy and then you walk away with nothing and you have to pay all your legal fees. Oh, so he was like man. we want to settle, settle so you can just get something i just I wanted, wanted like a I get ready with me it. like get ready with me to ready sue my court. contract yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was uh it was really stressful it's been stressful but like for the most part everything's fine now but homeowning is is so stressful and it, i wasn't prepared for any of that for sure did you build this house like did you buy the land and were like this is what i want or no. it was already built when okay bought it built and it was a new construction, which I was like, yeah. oh, this would be so great. Yeah. And then there's downsides for sure to both. Anyone else on your street, though, have that same like build or the contractor? There's same a project? celebrity who I think has the same house as me because they have all the exact same light fixtures. And I wanted to like reach out. Like I've met her in passing, but she's like a real celebrity, not like an influencer. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I've been like wanting to be like, hey, because hey. we're in the same neighborhood, too. I wanted to be like, hey. Because at one point I was like, is this like a class action lawsuit? Like, what, yeah. what do I yeah. think? Did you know that if you're going to build a house, you don't need insurance? Isn't that crazy? Like, you don't need insurance. Like, this company does not need insurance to go and decide to build houses for people. That's bananas. That's, Isn't that bananas? Yeah, I that thought that was crazy. Correct. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, all to say, got those fixed. And uh, there's 
there's always something small happening. How does Cal freak out? Because he seems like such a chill, easygoing guy. Yeah. Is he like cursing up a storm if something bad's happening? No, or is he just like silent? Silent, yeah. but just like, damn it. Like, yeah. yeah. He's just like, oh, it's okay, Ron, we're going to fix it. And then he's talking me off the ledge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But nothing really bothers him ever. Like, he's just so easygoing, so yep. chill. Love that. Mm -hmm. And how are the pups? Oh, my God. Also, not great. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, it's okay. Basically, um, I have three dogs, in case you didn't know. Yeah. One I got as a gift from my best friend. It didn't work out. So I kept her because I just didn't want her to go somewhere that I didn't know she'd be taken care of. Everything was fine. We were fine and dandy up until the top of this year. January 1st hits. All of a sudden, because now my the puppy's a year old, so she's hit social maturity. And I've done a lot of research on this. Apparently, when dogs hit social maturity, and especially like this one's a very headstrong puppy, they can decide like, oh, I'm alpha now. So my oldest one, who's very stubborn and old, and her started fighting for the alpha spot where they like literally, like I got bit in my face the other day because I was trying to break it up. So I have a bite right here. Like they'll just go at it. I'm trying to separate them. And they're just like, it's so, it's feral. Like you can't, I can't, I don't know what I'm, yeah, like, what to can, do. Can you even get a trainer to like I've, help? I've put them through training already too. And so I've been this? consulting the trainer and he's like telling me like what I can try and do. And I've been, Cal and I've been exhausting every option. Um, and so I actually, like we've been implementing what the trainer said and it's gotten so much better. But actually the thing that helped the most was like, consulted a pet psychic oh boy <laughs> i know it sounds crazy how am I, you've, had, over a, you've had a history and, over person, and you've had a history with psychic i oh, do yeah. i have and getting your money you you're know. a good client you for a psychic know. she's amazing though i have to say she just checked in with me this morning she's like how's everything going i consulted her because i was just crying every day because i didn't like rehoming wasn't an option for us like we're yeah. like we have to make this work but also at the same time if anything were to happen to my oldest dog who's 10 years old soon like i just i wouldn't be able to live with myself or the puppy mm. obviously but especially yeah. like her being older she's a little less agile um so the psychic i got on the phone with the psychic and i was referred to her by one of my good friends who adopted a dog from the korean meat festival oh, thing whoa. because he came and was incredibly uh aggressive and just obviously had been through a lot of trauma yeah. so this psychic was like very helpful for her situation so she was like just try and see and you can like get a reading and so i met with the psychic and the psychic told in me person on zoom? Via zoom okay and told me the craziest stuff that only a psychic would know only a psychic would did know. you have to hold the dog up no, on the zoom i had to send a photo of just their eyes and nose and then <laughs> how old they are it's crazy okay i know okay but i kid you not i mean she told me some very specific things about only like only cal or i would know about our dogs uh things that they like like think like how they we really didn't we i would talk to like alicia and ollie and like be crying or lauren or, or mia like crying about how frustrated i was but like not really too many details and she yeah. was like well they're doing this and it started because of this and daisy feels this way and luna feels this way and momo feels this way even something like L momo doesn't like when you make fun of luna's face which we're always like because mm, she's like a really big underbite <gasps> so like specifics oh my god also momo loves cal they're obsessed with each other like they are i literally looked over and she was sleeping on his chest the other night and she was like momo loves cal momo's actually like a spiritual being like it's so much more than just a dog and i was like okay she said momo's really worried about cal's health he really needs to go to get a physical she's is cal worried. sitting with you on the zoom call he was out or of is town. he like an, oh, okay he was okay, out of town okay. and so it's just myself and then i'm obviously freaking out because i'm like what's wrong with cal he goes and i was like I called him. I was like, you need to schedule a physical. <laughs> Momo's very worried about you. He went. He, they found some things going on. <gasps> Nothing crazy, but like things that he wouldn't have known had he not gotten his physical. Weird. All to say, it was so weird. She was like telling me that she was going to, you know, talk to the dogs. And she'd kind of like look to the side of the camera and be like, okay, talking to me. And she'd be like, okay, I'm going to talk to Daisy. Daisy. Blah, 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 blah. And I'd just be sitting there like watching Were the her. dogs listening to her voice? They were upstairs, actually. Daisy okay. was the only one on my lap, but the other two were upstairs. And she was like, okay, I talked to them. I'm going to, you know, we're going to figure it out. It's going to be okay. She had told me also there's a lump on Daisy's left shoulder. She also told me that Daisy's mouth really hurt. Daisy just got nine teeth pulled. And I didn't tell her that. I swear to God, you guys, I know it sounds crazy. And none of this was mentioned in past podcasts, vlogs, nothing, nothing to nothing. where she could have. I didn't want to say anything about them fighting either because I was like, I don't know what's happening. I need to get this under control before I say anything. And then uh, she was like, I'm going to, I'm going to 
shake up the energy a little bit. I'm going to tell them that they need to stop and like this is how it's going to be. So they need to like get with the program. I was like, okay, I'll try anything at this point. Yeah, yeah. I hang up. I kid you not. And maybe placebo. But like I felt an energy shift. And then the other two come down. They didn't fight for like weeks truly for weeks and then my assistant came in and she even was like Remy there's like an energy change I was like that's what I said I felt it and then she I ended up traveling like every weekend for a month so I ended up sending Luna to stay with my parents because I didn't want the uh, two of them alone exactly if someone were to watch because like people will come over like our friends will watch the dogs I was like if anything happens I'm liable because I got like cuts I got deep cuts on my hands I um, potentially needed stitches on some of them like it was really bad I don't care if I get bit I care a friend gets bit obviously so then I bring her back Everything's fine. Whoa. Wow. Everything's fine. So s- since then, no problems. Every once in a while, there's like a little, oh, I did another psychic reading with her recently because we're doing like energy, whatever. So she does yeah. animals as well and can do regular. Uh... Just, I think just animals. She's oh, an okay. animal communicator. The first time I got on, she told me she had just read a fish. So How much jewelry is she wearing? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> like, much, actually. Does she look like a animal psychic very no oh, very just normal, casual very sweet very like, could like be a kind DMV lady. employee literally could work anywhere <laughs> okay could, be, could do anything she's just a very normal sweet woman and she had told me that i well i was like i would like for cal to come to the next one she's like well do you think he'll think this is like mumbo jumbo because she's like i get some men that are like yeah mm, in the thing and so i was like no cal's very respectful to be fine we join it and i could tell cal was definitely a little apprehensive and she had told us some stuff um we like did some like body energy work and like lots of like yeah tapping and things it was very interesting and then when we ended it the the dog started fighting like crazy the next couple days they were fighting like four to five times a day like they were before and i was like what is going on and cal was like well you remember she told us she was going to shake up the energy for the next couple days day three fine everything's been fine very strange you have a fish if you want to read your goldfish before you eat it <laughs> uh, yeah your let cat. Her know. do you think it, like you're i don't know if I... rick has any i know uh... some people are against it and like Every, each to, to each their own, but I was like, I'm willing to try anything yeah. to get them to stop fighting. Yeah, I will mm-hmm. say the energy thing definitely makes sense. Um, there was a couple years ago, we went to uh, Caesar Milan, you know, the guy, the dog <gasps> yes, guy. Yes, of course. We went to his ranch, which is like an hour away. No way. It is an incredible, huge property with like 15 dogs that he has. <gasps> and he had like Ryan Gosling's dog there that he was <gasps> watching, and some like Will Smith's dog was there. What? He's like, and I grew up watching his show thinking it's like pretty cool, but you never really know. Yeah. And then he did like a demonstration of shifting his energy. <gasps> and he was like, so like when I'm talking to you and he did this to me, he's like, I'm talking to you and I'm like being nervous. You can like feel my nervous energy. But then if I'm calm, you can feel that I'm calm. Yeah. And I, it was like the air around his body changed. And <sighs> it was like the whole he, energy with dogs is a very big, powerful factor. And so Jason was there with like, we were all there together and he, we did a demonstration with a dog that was like a puppy. And it truly was like, you just see him. It's not about what you say. It's not about like what you do. It's truly the energy that you yep. bring in. I feel the that. dog responds to that. So, so true. he is the real deal, I think. Yeah. Um, I would suggest if things don't continue to go well, I would highly advise checking his services out. I would honestly consider that. Right now, what's really working, what the psychic had told me was like, similarly, they can read off your energy so much. So like when I feel like they're going to fight and like uh, until I had spoken to her, I'd be so tense all the time. I'd be sitting there just like waiting for it to happen to spring into action. Yeah. But... And she was like, you got to change your your mindset. She was mm-hmm. like, you know, if you think they're going to fight, like have a mental movie of them playing or having a mental movie of them just like relaxing and they'll relax. Yeah. And yeah. it's so true. It's yeah. good Animals to apply are to on animal. a whole different wavelength yeah. for sure. than humans are. For I mean, sure. there's a reason why they run when they think an earthquake or some impending doom yeah. is about to happen. Yes. They're in touch with a different frequency. And they can also so like true. smell fear and anxiety and calmness. Like they- and sicknesses yeah, and we disease. Yeah, they smell, they truly can just smell that where we are just like, if you're in a bad mood, they know, not because they hear you, but they yeah. can smell mm. it on you. That's so true. Yeah. So the pet psychic thing makes sense in like a capacity of your energy changed, therefore their energy changed. For sure. Yeah. Maybe that was even just like what it comes down to. Yeah. But either way, I was like, whatever works, I'll do it. 80 Was bucks? it expensive? 80 bucks. 80 bucks? Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Better than that 3500 I spent on that other psychic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's still in business, by the way. Oh, she's yeah. a national landmark. I drive by her all the time. and she's a, It's like a full field trip stop. <laughs> do you ever feel the urge to go back in? And yes, really? I do. And you I'm think just, she'd remember you instantly? That's what I, I want to know. she remembers someone who... 
hate my that best much. client the ever. <laughs> the one person. Yeah. I'm so curious, and I would like to know because I mean, if she's psychic, I feel like to some degree she has to remember. Like I've seen this aura before. Yeah, mm. maybe I will. We almost had a psychic on unfiltered. Yeah, just this past week. You guys well, didn't do like, it. Well, because like Mariah, or we had a medium who was going to come. I know Tyler on. Henry. I'm a big fan. Yeah, and he backed out last minute, <gasps> and I was like, "Well, he didn't see that one coming." Uh, or like, <laughs> well, I heard you're a skeptic about it. I'm a skeptic on mediums. Like okay. psychics, like I kind of believe with magicians. I love, I love mentalists. Uh, just speaking on behalf of the dead, I feel a little weird. Interesting. About. Okay. Because I hope. Well, apparently though they ha they have consulted criminal cases and stuff. I just oh. get very like kind of angry about people who have lost loved ones yeah. from being like murdered and I'm like well solve it if you can if you're speaking on behalf of the dead give those yeah, people like, who did you closure see? Yeah. more than on speaking on behalf of them but you're not providing the main piece of information yeah, yeah. there's there's just something with that it where feels a little bit uh like taking advantage of people I, but if it provides a, a very valid point but if it provides people closure and if someone's able to sleep better at night knowing that they had a connection with a loved one who is gone i am not one to judge that For yeah sure. at all i just there's something about them but if tyler henry did come on i wouldn't be like I don't believe this. Yeah, I'm of totally not. gonna be here and lean into it and let uh, me connect with anybody. Yeah. yeah, I would actually love to experience it. Yeah, after I'd kind of reevaluate and be like, what was maybe really going on? Mm. I mean, hell, I got like hypnotized. Okay, like oh, yeah. I can. Oh, that's right. That guy's yeah. been reposting those and they're going crazy I know, and viral. That's always, it's like. You know if like somebody posts a video of you when you're like hammer drunk and you don't remember it, yep. you're just like, ugh, delete it. But it's like that, but someone keeping keeps reposting it every yeah. now and then. And you were fully hypnotized? Yeah. I Whoa. yeah. I would say yeah, I was fully Ooh. hypnotized. Have you seen the clip? I don't remember. No, I don't it. think I've seen it. I just remember hearing that you got hypnotized. It felt like yeah. I was extremely high. That's what like I would describe the experience as. It's like I don't I can hardly remember it, but I do kind of remember it. It was but pretty you, fucking you wild. You also have to still allow yourself to be hypnotized yeah. Yeah. at the same time. Uh -huh. You need to be open to it. So Where did this happen? It happened at Jason's house. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Cuz he had hot yeah, he hired them and then they were doing it to Jonah and Susie and they were kind of like not into it. Uh -huh. And I was like, "Okay, I'm going to try to get yeah. into it." So That's yeah. pretty crazy. You, you were there. Yeah. Did he hypnotize you or you no. didn't want to do it? I didn't want to do it. I don't know if I'd do that. I think I'd get a little nervous. Like there was the one thing where he said, um, everything that people say, you're going to find extremely, extremely offensive and wake up. And then Matt wakes up and Jason's like, so Matt, how you doing? And Matt goes, Jason, you can't say that <laughs> yeah. on camera. And yeah. it was, and we'd be like, and it was so real. It wasn't fake. It felt, yeah, but it really, you do feel like you are being like offended by it. The <gasps> only thing that he did where I was like, okay, where like where he goes, I'm, I disappear, and he like hid behind a pillow. I was like, <laughs> who's gonna I, like, tell that see, guy? <laughs> <laughs> I can see. I felt like I was like playing with like a four year old. I'm like, oh yeah, sure you're <laughs> invisible. There was a bit of that where I was yeah. like, wow, uh, okay, I gotta watch that. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm still very like. Cringy. I I, I cringe yeah. every time it comes by my feet. I'm like, nope. And it's always the one video that like somebody from high school or someone's yeah. friend messages them and go, don't you know this guy? Is this true? And I have yeah. to like, explain myself. But yeah. Well, that was super fun. We've done about. We've covered a lot. I an know. Hour forty. Pretty good. Shut up. Yeah, we're cool. My God. Yeah. All right. Breeze. Love Remy, it. Remy, do you have anything you want to plug? I know that we covered pretty X unfiltered. Yes. But... Um, cooking with Remy. Please check it out. Check out my TikTok. I'm posting a lot, Miss Remy Ashton, and oh my vlogs, Rem Life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Please check out Remy. And if you haven't already, like, leave a comment down below, and leave a review. We love it so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care and have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.